Hi, thanks for joining me and welcome to part one of my 35mm film project. Now, if you haven't seen the preview video of this uh, little project, then uh, have a look at this video up here. I'll put a link to it there. And uh, that's a bit of a preview where I took the camera out uh, just to give it a test run. And that was done at Marion Park in South East London with a friend of mine uh, where the film blow up was shot. So go check that out. So why a film project now? Well, I've had a 35mm film camera for quite a few years now and I haven't shot with it for ages. So I thought it was about time I got the camera out and shoot some landscapes alongside my Canon digital camera just to compare the experience and the results. So the camera I'll be using is this. It's my Minolta X9 uh, film SLR that I've had for about 30 odd years or so. And I've only got one lens for it and it's a 28 to 85 millimeter zoom lens. So the X9 is from 1990 and I only really used it back in the day to shoot aircraft at air shows. Uh, I used it with a 70 to 210 uh, Sigma zoom lens and a 2 times Tele Plus teleconverter. And I didn't really know what I was doing with a camera back then. So I kind of used it in like a semi automatic aperture priority mode. So I set the aperture wide open at 3.5, I think it was, and the uh, shutter speed to automatic. And that's how I shot aircraft. Um, I basically used it like a large point and shoot with a big lens. Um, I never really used it to shoot landscape photography because I wasn't into that quite so much back then and uh, I used to shoot with Kodak color film and Fuji color film and I also some, shot some slides as well so I used Kodachrome and Fuji Chrome as well uh, but I never actually shot in black and white. So it's actually a very basic uh, film SLR. Uh, just to give you a, a, a very brief run through, you've got the shutter button in the usual place, uh, the dial for the shutter speed in the usual place, uh, a manual wind on, so you don't have an automatic uh, wind function on this one. Uh, there's a little window here which shows you how many exposures are remaining on your film, uh, a hot shoe, a power switch, and a manually selected ISO speed dial here. So when you're shooting with say ISO 100 film, you manually select ISO 100 here. So there's no DX coding uh, recognition on this camera, unlike some more modern cameras. Uh, so you have to set that manually. Uh, to wind the film back into the canister, you pop this little lever up and you wind backwards. Uh, and to open up the back, you just pull up on this and pull against the spring loaded mechanism and the back pops open. So to load the film, you put the canister in here, pull the leader across and uh, just pop the end into one of these slots here and start winding. And that, uh, that loads the film onto this reel as you progress through the film. Uh, and then you obviously wind it back in, like I just said. Uh, and then on the bottom you have a, a little battery compartment which holds two LR44 batteries. Uh, it's an electronic shutter and also in the viewfinder there are some uh, red LEDs which kind of show you the, uh, the shutter speed and the exposure um, in the viewfinder. So they're the only things that the batteries power. Um, and then uh, the lens itself, you have a Minolta uh, 28 to 85 millimeter lens. It's a variable aperture, so it's f3.5 to f4.5. Uh, it's all manually focused. There's no autofocus or image stabilization on this camera. So you have the manual focus there, the manual uh, zoom there, and you've obviously got the aperture ring on this one right at the back here. Uh, now on this camera you have a depth of field preview switch which is this one just here so you push this in and it's spring loaded so you hold it in and it stops the aperture down to the aperture that you've selected so that in the viewfinder you get an accurate representation of your uh, depth of field. It does dim the viewfinder quite significantly so it is actually quite difficult to use. Uh, 
Now, the reason I mention that is because uh, alongside the X9, uh, Minolta produced an X300 as well. Um, and the X300 didn't have that. The, the bodies were pretty much identical, uh, but the X300 didn't have a depth of field preview button. But instead, up here on the top right uh, side of the prism, it had a little screw in uh, attachment for a cable release, uh, which the X9 doesn't have. So those two uh, things are the two main differences between the two camera bodies. And, uh, and that is pretty much it. That it's a very basic camera and uh, it's all completely manually controlled apart from uh, a semi-automatic uh, or aperture priority kind of mode. Uh, so they're the only two modes it has. Uh, and that's a pretty basic straightforward run through of the layout and the features of the X9. So I have two rolls of film to shoot for my uh, 35mm film project. Uh, I have a roll of Ilford HP5 Plus ISO 400 black and white film. Uh, I've never used that before. And I also have a roll of Kodak Ultramax ISO 400 colour film. I've not used that particular variety of, of colour film before either. So, uh, so they're the two rolls of film that I'll be using on this project. So from here on in, the next part of the process is to shoot in black and white. So in part two, I intend to load the HP5 black and white film into the X9 and go to a landscape location and shoot some landscape images in black and white. And I'm going to be doing that alongside uh, shooting the same images or very similar images with my Canon digital camera as well uh, and I'm going to be shooting this in black and white and processing the digital images in black and white too so that's the the plan for part two and then part three I'll be repeating the process uh, albeit at a different landscape location uh, but instead I'll be shooting with the Kodak color film instead in the X9 and I'll be shooting the Canon in color and processing the images in color as well so the whole reason for that is that we can compare the results right at the end and that's the plan for part four so part four will be comparing the digital images with the printed color and black and white images and having a bit of a review and a recap on uh, on my thoughts about shooting with the x9 after all these years so that's the plan uh, i hope you can join me on the next part so the next one will be part two where i'll be shooting uh, black and white color film so i hope you can join me then